Hey, Phil Steele here. One of the most common questions I get is how to take a photo from Lightroom to Photoshop and then back when you're editing your photos. Now, Lightroom and Photoshop are designed to work hand in hand, so if you do this the right way, it's seamless and easy. But if you do it the wrong way, you can cause yourself all kinds of trouble. And even if you think you know how to do this, there are some subtleties involved if you make multiple round trips or if you make nested round trips involving a third program. So even if you already know the basics, you still might get something from this video. All right, let's see how you make a round trip from Lightroom to Photoshop and back. Now, first of all, you get slightly different behavior if you open a JPEG file versus a RAW file. Let's take a look. Now you can see here is a JPEG. First, I'm gonna make a quick edit to it so that we can tell that it's already been edited in Lightroom. I'm just gonna apply a preset. I kind of think the aged photo preset looks appropriate with this one. So now you can tell it's been changed. Now let's say we wanted to do some additional editing in Photoshop. To open it directly in Photoshop without leaving Lightroom, I can just go up to the Photo menu, pick Edit In, and then pick Photoshop. And if you want to use the keyboard shortcut, it's just Command E on a Mac or Control E on a PC. E as in Edit, easy to remember. Now you can see when I open a JPEG file, I get a dialog box with three choices. I can edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, or I can just edit a copy of the original, or I can edit the original file itself. Now I can't see any reason to ever open the original file. That just seems needlessly risky to the original. So I typically choose open a copy with Lightroom adjustments because if I've already been working on the photo in Lightroom, then presumably I'd like to preserve any changes that I've already made. And to be honest, sometimes I'm not sure if I've made any changes, so I usually just choose that option by default to be on the safe side. But if you'd rather start with a fresh copy in Photoshop without your Lightroom changes, you can choose edit a copy and you'll be starting with a clean slate. In this case, I'm going to choose Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments. And now you can see my photo is open in Photoshop, and it has my Lightroom Adjustments, and I'm ready to go to work. But before we proceed, let's go back to Lightroom and see what happens if you open a RAW file. So here I have a RAW file in Lightroom, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command-E or Control-E on a PC to open it in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, I never got that dialog with the three choices. It just opened the file in Photoshop. And if I've made adjustments to it in Lightroom, which I have in this case, those adjustments came along. In other words, it just defaults to option number one. Now, it does that because Photoshop cannot directly edit a RAW file. So there's no way it can open the original or a copy of the original. So you just don't get those options. Now, if I wanted to open the equivalent of my raw original without any of the Lightroom adjustments that I've already made, I could do it with a little workaround. So now I'm back in Lightroom with my photo selected, and what I could do is make a virtual copy of the photo. So I'm gonna do that on, uh, on my Mac, it's Command and the apostrophe key. On a PC, it's Control apostrophe. Now I've created a virtual copy of the file, and you can see by the little corner there that this is the virtual copy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit reset in the develop module to reset all the changes that were made to that file. And now if I open that in Photoshop, I'll do Command E. Now I've got what's effectively a copy of my original raw file open in Photoshop so I can start with a clean slate. But instead, let's go back to Lightroom. I'm gonna switch back to my adjusted file because this is the more typical workflow where you wanna preserve the changes that you made in Lightroom and carry those changes over to Photoshop. So I'm gonna do Command E and open this one in Photoshop. Now, just to make it easy to see what we've done, I'm gonna add some text to this photo in Photoshop. So I'll just put some text here that says Photoshop Edit One. And now this is the key step. After you've finished your editing in Photoshop, just go to the file menu and pick save. Don't pick save as because if you give the file a new name, it'll break the connection with Lightroom. You just wanna pick save 
and let it save it with its own default settings. And now back in Lightroom we can see that our new file which we edited in Photoshop it has magically appeared here in Lightroom and it's usually right beside the original if it's not you may have some weird sort order selected. And you can see the file has the same name as the original with the word edit appended to it. And in this case you can see the file is a TIFF because that's the default format that Photoshop will save it in. If you want to change those default settings you can find them here. Lightroom, Preferences, External Editing tab, and you can see in the Photoshop section right here, these are the default settings that it uses for this round trip. I usually just leave them alone. Now let's talk about what happened. When we say the file was saved back to Lightroom, what do we actually mean? What literally happened there? Well, it was a two-step process behind the scenes. First, Photoshop saves the file to your hard disk as a TIFF file, typically in the same folder where your original was located. Now, Lightroom has a little script running in the background watching for that file to be saved. And when it sees that file saved to your hard disk, Lightroom automatically imports it into the Lightroom catalog. And that's why it suddenly appears here. It did that step for you. Now, if for some reason it fails to appear in Lightroom, you can just go back and manually import it. The most common cause of failure is changing the file name by using save as instead of the save command in Photoshop, so don't do that. Now here's something interesting. What if I go back to Photoshop and what if I continue editing the file? I'm going to make another bit of text here. Photoshop edit 2. And now I'm going to hit save. And now let's look back in Lightroom. And you can see that the file automatically updated itself with the new change in Lightroom. The files are linked. And as long as they stay linked and both programs stay open, any further edits in Photoshop will continue to be updated in Lightroom. Now let's look at what happens if you make multiple round trips with the same file. Depending on how you do it, it can work in several different ways. So this is where it starts to get tricky. But before we dig into that, I just want to mention quickly that if you like my teaching style, I have two complete courses teaching Lightroom and Photoshop from the ground up, everything you ever wanted to know. You can find both of those courses on my website at steeltraining.com. All right, now let's dig into making multiple round trips from Lightroom to Photoshop with the same file. Now I've closed Photoshop, which broke the open link between those files that we were working with earlier. So let's see what happens if you simply want to reopen that newly created TIFF file, the one previously saved from Photoshop, and do some additional Photoshop editing on it. Here you see the TIFF file that was previously saved back from Photoshop to Lightroom, and I'm going to type Command E to open it again in Photoshop. And because TIFF is a bitmapped format, like the JPEG that we saw earlier, I get the choice of how I want to open the file. Now here's where your choice can make a big difference. Keep in mind, I have not done any additional editing on this photo in Lightroom yet. This is the file exactly as it was last saved in Photoshop. And because of that, it still contains all the layers from my Photoshop file. So if I choose Edit Original, that will just reopen this TIFF file in Photoshop with all of its layers intact, just like it was when it was saved. Likewise, if I choose Edit a Copy, that will make an exact copy of this TIFF file and open it in Photoshop with all the layers intact. I'm going to choose Edit a Copy. And you can see I'm back here in Photoshop with that copy open, and you can see over here in the Layers palette that I have all of my layers. And if I wanted to change one of those layers, I could do that. Let's just do it just for the fun of it. I'll pick this piece of text, and I'll just change, change the color of that piece of text. And now I'll save it. And we'll go back to Lightroom. And you can see that change to the text color appeared on a new copy that is now appearing in Lightroom. There's the previous one, and here's the new one. Because I edited a copy, it made a new copy of it in Lightroom when it got saved back. But now let's look at what happens if you do some additional editing in Lightroom first. So I'm going to back up a step, 
go back to the previous version, the one that we had saved from the previous round of Photoshop editing. And now I'm going to make a change in Lightroom before we try to edit it in Photoshop. So to pick something easy, I'm just going to apply a preset to it. That looks pretty good, black and white landscape. And now that I've made that change, now I'm going to open it for editing in Photoshop. So I'm going to do Command E. But now I have a dilemma. Because if I choose Edit Original or Edit a Copy, I'll have all my Photoshop layers when this opens in Photoshop, but I will lose the changes that I just made in Lightroom. Let's take a look. I'll choose Edit a Copy. And as you can see here in Photoshop, I have all my layers here in the Layers panel, but I don't have the black and white conversion that I just made in Lightroom. So I'm going to close that. So now let's try this again. I'm going to type Command E or Control E on a PC. And this time I'm going to choose Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments. And now you can see that the file opened up in Photoshop with my Lightroom change, the black and white conversion. But did you notice anything different? Over here in the Layers panel, all of my layers are gone. The file got flattened. It had to be flattened to bring those Lightroom changes along. So that's the catch. When you've made further Lightroom adjustments after your last Photoshop save, if you want to get those adjustments carried over to Photoshop for another round of editing, you're going to end up with a flattened file and no more access to your layers. But there is a sneaky workaround if you're determined to have the best of both worlds here. So let me back up again and show you this trick. Here's my file with the additional Lightroom adjustments. But before I open it in Photoshop, I'm going to make a virtual copy of this file. And on a Mac, the keyboard shortcut is Command plus the apostrophe key. On a PC, it would be Control apostrophe. And now you can see I have a virtual copy. You can tell by the little corner there that this one is the copy. And that copy has my Lightroom edits. So now I'm going to go back to the previous version of the file, the one I made the virtual copy from, and in the Develop module in Lightroom, I'm going to hit Reset to take away that round of Lightroom changes that I made to that file. And now I'm going to open it in Photoshop with Command E. And I'm going to choose Edit a Copy. I could choose Edit Original if I didn't want to keep making more copies, but I'm sort of cautious. I usually don't edit the original. I just keep making more copies. And here it is, open in Photoshop. It's, it's the same as we saved from the last round of Photoshop, but minus the Lightroom changes. And I'm just going to make a change. I'll change the font style here, just so we have some way to, to recognize that this has been changed. That'll do. All right. So now I'm going to save it. Here it is in Lightroom. We've got a new copy. It's got the changed font style that I just made. And now, if I want to get those Lightroom changes back that I had to give up in order to preserve my layers, I can simply synchronize those changes from the virtual copy that I made to this new one. So I'm going to first select that virtual copy that had the black and white conversion. I'm going to select my new file. And then I'm going to pick Sync. And I'm just going to accept them all. And voila, now I have the edited text that I was able to change because I had access to those layers in Photoshop, but I also have my latest round of Lightroom adjustments that I retrieved from that virtual copy all merged now into one photo. Finally, let's look at a more complicated case where you actually include a third program in this round tripping process. We're starting out in Lightroom, and I'm going to open this raw file in Photoshop in order to add some text to it. So I'll type Command E. Here it is in Photoshop, and let's just put some text on here. This is a photo I shot in London recently, so we'll just put some text on. It says London. But now, while I'm here in Photoshop, let's say I want to do some edits in a third program. Maybe I want to swap out the sky. And, of course, this is actually a beautiful sky for London, but it'll make a good example. Now, I could do a sky swap in Photoshop, of course, but it's nowhere near as easy as it is with the new Luminar 4, which has made swapping skies ridiculously easy. So, in the same way that I opened the photo directly from Lightroom into Photoshop, 
I can now open it directly from Photoshop into Luminar with Luminar behaving as a Photoshop plugin. But first there's one thing I need to do. I found that it only opens the currently selected layer instead of the whole layer stack. So I'm going to combine both layers into a single smart object before opening it. Now you could also use the merge a layer command and merge them into a single visible layer. You can see my Photoshop course if you want more info on that. So I'm gonna select both the layers here in the layers palette and I'm gonna go to the filter menu and I'm just gonna say convert for smart filters and that'll convert these two into one object. You can see we have one layer now instead of two. So now I'm gonna to go to the filter menu. I'm gonna pick Skylum Software, Luminar 4. And now we have the photo open in Luminar with Luminar running as a Photoshop plugin while Photoshop is still running as a Lightroom plugin. That's why I call this a nested round trip. So let's swap out the sky. It's super easy in Luminar. You just pick this little creative tab here, pick AI sky replacement, sky selection. I'm just gonna pick one at random. Bam, I love it. Now to close Luminar and return to Photoshop, I just hit the apply button here. And here we are back in Photoshop. I've still got my Photoshop text, but now I've got the Luminar sky. And you can see I can turn that sky on and off over here in the layers palette because this smart object remembers that it came from a different program. So now if I'm ready to return to Lightroom, I just do the usual. I go save it in Photoshop. And here you can see the file in Lightroom with the text from Photoshop and the sky from Luminar all combined into this single photo. Pretty slick, eh? And by the way, I'll put a discount link for Luminar down below this video if you want to check that out. So that's how you round trip from Lightroom to Photoshop. If you want to learn more about either Lightroom or Photoshop, you can check out my full length courses for both of them at steeltraining.com. I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to talking to you again soon.